A Russian fighter jet has downed a US drone after colliding with the aircraft, forcing it to crash in the Black Sea. Russian officials denied responsibility, but footage later released by the Pentagon shows the Russian jets maneuvering dangerously close to the US aircraft before an apparent collision occurs. The Russian Navy is now attempting to recover the drone for intelligence purposes. The unarmed US M9Q Reaper drone was operating in international airspace over the Black Sea, likely gathering intelligence on Russian military activity in Ukraine when it was intercepted by two Russian Su-27 fighters. The Russian fighters are shown flying dangerously close to the US aircraft and repeatedly dumping fuel as they fly past 19 times, before an apparent collision occurs, after which a propeller on the drone can be seen to have bent. Following this, the drone became unstable, and the US chose to crash the aircraft into the Black Sea. Russian ships have now reached the site of the crash and are attempting to retrieve the drone, although whether they'll be able to recover anything in the estimated 4,000-foot depth of water is unclear, and perhaps improbable. Likely wanting to avoid an overt attack on a US military aircraft and to maintain deniability, as suggested by the evasive Russian denial that their jets did not use onboard weapons, it is unclear if the collision was intentional. However, the incident still represents a worrying escalation and a warning of the dangers of US and Russian aircraft operating in such close proximity to each other. While there is a strict red line of NATO countries engaging directly with Russia due to the fears of escalation, these lines have been somewhat blurred after the substantial military support offered by the US and its allies, something complicated further by Poland's recent decision to supply Ukraine with MiG-29 fighters. Direct contact between Russian and US military aircraft arguably pushes this strained balance to its furthest point so far. The balance lies between NATO's desire to aid Ukraine, while at the same time avoiding action seen as too provocative by Moscow that could risk escalation between the nuclear powers. The US position seems to have been based on providing defensive weapons only, rather than offensive weapons that could strike Russia directly, something seen in the US modifications of their high Mars rockets sent to Ukraine, limiting their range to prevent attacks on Russian soil, as well as the denial of fighter jets. But this may be changing not only with Poland sending aircraft to Ukraine, but also represented by the US decision to send new rocket-propelled bombs with a 150km range, far outstripping the 80km range of the high Mars system. The US and NATO may be choosing a worst of both worlds scenario, denying Ukraine the weaponry it needs when it could make a significant impact for fear of angering Moscow, only to later send these weapons anyway, as seen with the significant delay by Germany of Leopard tank deliveries, or the initial denial of US long-range weaponry. If the goal is to aid Ukraine while preventing overt provocation towards Moscow, the chosen tax seems a compromise that achieves neither, with current decision-making perhaps being best described as somewhat incoherent.